Did you ever struggle with your landings? I know I did. So here are five tips to improve your landing skills. It's Catherine Bernier from Skydive Vibes, sharing the passion of skydiving and helping you become a better skydiver. So if you're new here, well, consider subscribing and click the little bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video all about skydiving. All right, so not long ago, I posted on Instagram and Facebook about how I struggled with my landings at the beginning. I must say that when I started, I had the tendency to break too late. So you saw me face into the dirt multiple times. After that, I managed to improve a little bit and at that point I was flaring too high, meaning that my canopy would stall and I would still be too high to touch the ground when my canopy stopped. So again, I would hit the ground hard. So from this confession I made to you guys, you did answer me back that a lot of you are actually also struggling with your landings. So I managed to grab some tips and tricks from coaches but also from you guys that you got from your coaches and I thought it would be great to share them with you. But the fact of the matter is that the best person around you to help you with your landings are actual coaches on your drop zone because they'll get to see you, they know about your skills, your progression and such so they are the best to ask questions to and maybe you want to have a discussion with them after getting some tips from this video to see if it applies to you. Tip number one will look at the horizon. Most people when they start skydiving they tend to look straight down when it's time for them to land and this gives you the wrong perspective on the height you are. So you are better to look at the horizon and maybe get some reference in that field of view in order to give you a hint on the height you are actually at. The second tip is trust your legs. I see so many people that has great flare timing but when it's time for them to stand their legs aren't strong enough and they finish on the ground. If it's your issue, well most of the time is that people are kind of afraid of the landing. They don't actually trust their legs to support the landing. So try to pay attention to that when you're landing. If you are slowly falling into the ground, it may be a hint that you're simply not trusting your legs. A good tip that I've seen from Brian German is to try to lean forward when it's time for you to flare. This way, your body position will make you instinctively run when you touch the ground. What did help me with that matter is that when it's time for me to land, I'm simply lifting my knees kind of ready to jump. And I'm telling myself, run when you touch the ground. So this way I'm ready to start walking or running if needed. Third tip is about the flare timing. Most of the time this is the big issue for skydivers, especially new ones, because when should I pull the toggle? And also the way you pull your toggle will have an impact on the flare, whether you do a two-stage flare or just one, this has an impact. So to have a good timing, first you need to know what you're doing right now. Are you the type that hit the ground, meaning that you're flaring too late? Or if you're the type that you're still up in the air after finishing your flare, this means that you're flaring too high. So if you're flaring too high too soon, my trick that helped me well, they tell you to flare when you're at one system from landing, but one system, what, or 12 feet, what does that mean at that point? Like, I, I had a hard time figuring out when am I at 12 feet precisely. So what I started to do and the trick that someone gave me, so whenever I feel it's time for me to flare, I tell to myself, wait, 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 okay now, three times. It can be called also the oh 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 method, where your gut tells you to flare, but you know you're flaring always too high. So at that point, try to hold on and your heart will squeeze, I tell you, but try to hold on and tell yourself, wait three times before flaring. This helped me a lot. Now be careful, don't wait too long neither, but you get what I mean. Now when you're flaring too low, meaning you're hitting the ground full speed, 
usually this helps you alone not to do that anymore but I know I had to hit the ground a couple of times myself well we could reuse the same tip where when you think you're too high to flare well you could just start your flare because up to this point every time you said you're too high to flare you were most probably at the right height to flare because you ended up hitting the ground without flaring so that is simply a logical thinking behind that but I would be curious if it works. Let me know if you try it, but again, ask your coach about if it's a good idea for you to do so. Just trying to help here. Tip number four, get someone to film your landings and have them on video and try to show them to one, two, three coaches who will be able to give you some hints on what you're doing wrong or right. To push this a little bit further, a great idea is to take a flight one course. And that applies even if you don't have any landing problems. Because getting to fly your canopy better will make you a better skydiver overall. So flight one is offering great courses all around the globe. And I personally did the 101 and 102 course and it helped me a lot. This is also where you'll learn the two-stage flare, which is really another step in to mastering your landings. Now I have a couple bonus tips. One is take small steps into your progression. So you're trying to improve your flare timing, just work on that until you get it right. Then try to improve something else. This way you'll see small increase in your landing skills and in the end you'll end up mastering your canopy more than you think. The second small step I want to say is that since we're always landing facing the wind, I've always personally find it easier for me to land when there is actually wind. So just a good constant wind will slow you down way more during your landings and will give you more time to react and even more time to look at what you're doing. Gotta love the elevator. Just kidding, but what I mean is that I've seen some people saying I prefer landing with no wind at all, but the fact is that your landings are way faster when you have no winds. So make sure to have a little bit of wind, that will help, I'm sure, as long as you're landing facing the wind, of course. All right, so I hope you've liked this video. Again, make sure to counter verify everything and have a discussion with your coach. Your situation is most probably different. So make sure to have a coach to look at your landings and give you the right recommendations. But this video gives you some food for thought and also some elements to discuss with your coach about your landings. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And again, consider subscribing not to miss our weekly videos all about skydiving. On that, keep jumping, stay safe, master those landings, and I'll talk to you soon. Blue sky.